With the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro officially unveiled, this is the current iPhone lineup. The iPhone 14 and 14 Plus saw $100 price reductions, as did the 13, and both the 13 mini and iPhone 12 have been removed altogether. The iPhone 13 mini is gone because if it was still around, it would cost $500. This would clearly be a superior value to the iPhone SE, which is $430. Thus, nobody would buy the iPhone SE. So, Apple needs to have some sort of gap between the lowest tier, the SC, and then the next step up, the iPhone 13. The issue here is that the iPhone SE is still at an absolutely horrid value regardless. For $170 more than the iPhone SE, you can get the iPhone 13, which is better in literally every single way except that it has the same chipset. $170 isn't nothing, but what you gain makes it more than worth it. With the 13, you're getting a larger, more premium device, a much sharper, more vibrant OLED screen, significantly better battery life, it has two camera lenses on the back, both of which are a lot better than what the SE has. The SE doesn't even have a night mode, something that's been on the iPhone since like the iPhone 11 in 2019. And to cap it all off, the iPhone 13 starts with 128 gigs versus the 64 on the cheapest SC. For the same amount of storage, you're adding 50 bucks to the SC, bringing it up to 128, which now makes the 13 only $120 more. And so if you consider everything else you're getting, well, hopefully you're starting to see my point. Okay, let's back up here. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I'm a bit heated, but I wanna make it obvious just how poorly priced the iPhone SE is. I actually like the SE. I think it's a good phone. It's solid. It has a home button, of course, which is perfect for the type of user who isn't interested in the newer stuff or whatever. That's fine. That's fair. But let's be clear here. The iPhone SE is just an iPhone 8 with an upgraded chipset. And I don't mean, oh, it just looks like an iPhone 8, so it's basically an iPhone 8. No, it really is just an iPhone 8 with the exact same body display and even camera sensor. The battery life is a bit improved, albeit still not very good. And the A15 chipset does mean technically slightly better photos thanks to the software processing, but the physical camera itself is unchanged, and practically everything else about the phone is literally just copied and pasted. Since the iPhone SE came out in early 2022, there has been absolutely no change to the price point of $430. Meanwhile, you have the iPhone 13, which of course came out late 2021, since which has been reduced by $200. Originally it was $800, last year it was $700, and now it's $600. So you have a genuinely good and modern phone getting a pretty good reduction in price over time versus a phone based on six-year-old hardware staying at the same price over the same time span. The iPhone SE not seeing a price drop would be bad enough were the hardware brand new in 2022, but it wasn't. Aside from the chipset, the phone itself is an iPhone 8. So what is going on here? Why is the SE at such a horrible value? You expect $170 to get you a better phone, but the amount that you get with this is just absurd. Going up $200 from the iPhone 13 to the 15 doesn't give you near nearly as much improvement. Is this a joke? Like genuinely. Apple, what are you doing? Before we break this down further, I should probably note that the iPhone SE is heavily rumored to be getting an updated fourth generation in early 2024, which allegedly is going to look similar to the iPhone 14. It will definitely bring USB-C whenever it does end up happening. It could possibly come 25 instead. I think this is unlikely as I can't really see Apple continuing to charge so much money for a phone that's already such poor value. They do have some standards, even if it doesn't feel like it at times. So if Apple's got a replacement for the SE lined up in early 2024, it'll get rid of the severe pricing issue by just being rid of the 2022 SE altogether. That or maybe they reduce the price of this phone to $300 or something, who knows. And for what it's worth, I'm guessing any new SE will come in at about $500. Apple loves to raise their prices whenever they can. And frankly, that new SE might be a really great phone. That remains to be seen. This is all speculation. And ultimately, whether or not that does end up happening doesn't matter because right now, in the moment approaching the end of 20. 2023, the iPhone SE is just atrociously priced. And what's really funny is if you go onto Apple's website, I think it's pretty clear they're aware of this disparity in value. If you go on Apple's website right now and click on iPhone 13, it brings you straight to the buy page. If you scroll down here, you'll see a bit of a comparison and you'll note that the iPhone 13 is missing. You've got the 14 and 14 plus and then the iPhone SE. Okay, this is odd. And in fact, scrolling through the 13's page, there's no specs anywhere on this page. It's ridiculous, but okay, let's go to the iPhone SE page. First off, we actually get a little advertisement for it. Note if you click iPhone 14, it also brings you to the buy page directly. It's just the 15 Pro, the 15, and then the SE that has this sort of advertisement landing page. But if we click buy to go to the same page and scroll down, in the comparison, it's the exact same thing that was on the iPhone 13 page. Meaning, if you were coming here as a regular consumer who doesn't know a whole lot about iPhone, which is very likely if you're looking at the cheapest iPhone, it doesn't even really look like the 13 is an option. Because if it was there, I think it would be very obvious that you should go up and pay that 
extra $170. Now, $170 is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but the iPhone 13 brings so much to the table with double the base storage and is most definitely worth that extra step up. The iPhone SE is a good phone, but it is not worth what Apple's charging for it. Carriers will have discounts for it and have cheap plans, contracts, and stuff. That might be worth it depending on the situation, but don't give Apple your money. If you do want to give Apple your money, get the iPhone 13, because that phone's actually kind of worth it. Maybe it's a bit overpriced, but every iPhone is a bit overpriced. That's how it works. Ideally, if you want an SE, go to the used market, where it is like half the price in really good condition. We're talking $200. I've seen it significantly less. I've seen it for under $150 in good condition, which is insane for what it is. It does have the A15 chipset, so that's the same as the iPhone 13. It's a solid performer, but everything else about it is straight out of 2017. It's not as if phones were bad in 2017, and for $150, $200, the iPhone SE is absolutely worth it in my opinion, but don't give Apple your money for it. That's really the big thing. Apple should have a budget option, but this ain't it, Chief, and I would say that it's not even really priced as a budget option anyways. $430 prices a lot of people out. At the end of the day, the real travesty here is that this is marketed as Apple's budget best value phone. Their tagline is serious power, serious value. No, Apple, it does not have serious value. Yes, the chipset is great and it's gonna get years of software support, but that is all it has going for it. The hardware is too old. Their margins on this must be absolutely insane. The fact of the matter is, the people who want to buy the cheapest iPhone are often doing it because they're on a strict budget and they need that money. So for Apple to give them an inferior product for their cash is honestly really disappointing. For a company who loves to show off their carbon neutrality by 2030 and environmental stuff, pretending they love the people of Earth just so much, they sure don't like to actually do anything to help those people out. There's nothing wrong with the environmental stuff, it's actually great, but remember who's being ripped off when they buy an iPhone SE. It's the budget users, the people who need the most out of their phone for what they're giving. Okay, I think that's about it for me here. This is a bad deal, don't buy it. Buy the iPhone 13, or better yet, turn to the used market. Giving Apple your money is not something you need to do. They don't deserve it. They have not earned it. And this is coming from someone who has the newest iPhone and probably will buy the 15 Pro. But this phone is just bad value straight up. There's no getting around it. So with that, I'm done here. Thank you for watching. Maybe hit that like button, consider subscribing, and make sure that everybody you know does not buy the iPhone SE unless they really want it or are getting a deal. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.